certainly looks like the market is going to take it to that level or higher in the very short term. Uh, is it sustainable? Uh, incredibly disappointed. Uh, we still feel betrayed. Hello, this is uh, Dave from Red Deer City TV in sunny, sunny Red Deer, Alberta, date for the May long weekend. Uh, I'm in uh, Starbucks Chapters, uh, Indigo, I guess I should say, uh, today with a couple of authors from Calgary. Uh, first, we got Stina Holmes and we got Laura Lovett. Hi. Hi. Um, now, we're both. Right. Um, so, so, Stina, um, now I understand you're, uh, you got some pretty amazing. Uh, some credentials here in New York Times and such. Um, what is it uh, that a Calgary author has so much to say and, and why do so many people want to hear what you got to say? I think because I, I wrote a book that um, connected with everyone's hearts. I wrote a story that was, that was personal to me uh, way back in 2012 and um, as soon as I, I published it, it just blew up and I think it was because it was a book that readers could connect to and um, something that they learned to appreciate and expect from me, from my books. Good, good. So your, your latest book here, um, apparently I guess you're sold out. I am all sold out. Uh, can, you can you tell us the name of your book again? Yeah, so it's called The Forgotten Ones. Okay. And it's all about those deathbed confessions and secrets that we want to keep hidden in our families and how they come out and whether they're true or not. Okay, okay. Yeah, cool. Um, I'll just go over to uh, to Laura. Um, Laura, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So I'm a psychologist. I'm a psychologist based in Calgary and I've been practicing in the field for 15 years and I tried uh, penning my first novel um, many years ago and my first novel was Losing Cadence. It's a psychological thriller and it's gained a lot of traction and my sequel Finding Sophie just came out a few months ago. Okay. So, oh, okay. So you're, you're. So right now you're talking. You're on a tour, signing on Finding Sophie, basically. Exactly. I bet you're. Yeah. Uh, you're but you're bringing the other books with you too, obviously. Yeah, so, yeah, and I'm just uh, really excited to be with Stina. I, I really admire her work and uh, the psychological suspense that she just uh, launched. I couldn't put it down. It was phenomenal, and I think it's a really important message because it affects most families in some way. Yeah, yeah. Um, why do you feel that right now, in, in these times, that this is really important to get out to people? Uh, with the state of how both, I guess, any one of the academics, I guess, um, why is it important to have this message, even though this is fiction, but uh, you're, you're sending the message to everybody um, that they need, if they need help. Can you talk a little bit about the mental aspect of all of this? Sure, so for my book, um the Forgotten Ones. I wrote it during a time when my daughter um, suffered from severe depression and mental or, um, suicide. And so for three years we dealt with um, suicidal tendencies and hospital visits and whatnot. And I didn't know what I didn't know. I didn't, I thought I would know what the signs were um, if a child was ever feeling that way and I had no idea. Um, so my goal when with writing my books is just to bring out that, that the stigma isn't there, right? That it could happen to anyone, and it could be anyone's child. Um, and so what I want to do, what I hope to do with these books, is I'm donating half the proceeds to a, a mental health uh, charity. It's called Lifeline Canada Foundation. And they're a Canadian foundation. Um, and their whole goal is to help reduce uh, suicide incidences. So that it's all about suicide prevention with teenagers. Um, we had a lot of help with my daughter, but I know a lot of families don't. And so I want to be able to enable them to help more families. That's, that's great. That's awesome. That's a very, that's a very uh, noble thing. You know? um, Laura, so um, in your books, can you explain um, why 
why are you, uh, I know that's a long question. <laughs> okay. Can I add to it? Oh yeah, sure. Go said? ahead. I'm just trying to think something to say. Go ahead. Yeah, no worries. So I think that the topic of mental health um, for many, many decades has been a stigmatized topic where people don't talk about it. They keep it very hush-hush. There's a lot of shame around it. At work, um, we're not supposed to have any mental or emotional challenges, but it's okay if we have a sickness, like a physical sickness, but mental health has been taboo. And I, I think that's really changing in the world. And we've tried to really, I was on a board for the Psychologically Healthy Workplace for a few years and getting workplaces to um, be psychologically healthy places to work and also to be more open uh, about mental health um, in general, right? And I think I'm, I'm really happy to see that the world is moving towards that and that the, these topics are, are being addressed. I think we still have a long way to go, but we're making some traction there. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, that's the underlying, a uh, lot of the root of uh, problems in society is because we're not uh, dealing with, like I was mentioned earlier, you know, dealing with some of these root problems when, when, when people are, are younger, when they can be identified and, and help. You know, and, and then by the time it's get older, then bad things happen, you know, and, and it's just sad that sometimes it's too late for some people, you know. Um, I guess it's never too late, but it takes a lot more when you're older to, to fix, you know, to fix your, to get an issue, to, to talk about it, the stigma, right? Because you're, as you get older, you um, are not supposed to have a problem. Society tells you, you know, get up, go to work. If you do that, you get this, you, this happens to you. But somewhere in between, stuff happens. You know? And we can't either keep the pace with the Joneses or have a little break in life. So, so, um, so this, Tim, talk a little bit about, more about this, um, this foundation that you, your, that your Lifeline Canada Foundation. Yeah. <clears throat> so they're an organization located in Kelowna, BC, and their whole goal is, um, suicide prevention among teenagers. Uh, so they go into the schools, they have an app on their phone where uh, teenagers are able to get the help that they need. Um, they can talk with someone one-on-one -on -one, and there's different resources that are available that way. They also provide um, comfort dogs um, to be with the kids, and which I think is amazing. My, my daughter had one, a comfort dog, um, when she was going through her period and it was, um, I, think, I think it really helped her. It helped to stabilize her, it helped her to give her a focus on something other than the thoughts that were in her head and, and wanting to hurt, hurt herself. Um, yeah. I, I, I know you're getting a little, subject, a little emotional yeah. when you're talking about that. It's such a hard um, thing that families go through and, and people don't always understand. And I remember like when it first happened, everyone was like, she seems, she seems so happy. Like her, she's dealing with suicide. Um, some, of the, some people didn't even believe us because she hid it so well. Um, she didn't think that she could be honest and tell people how she was feeling. Um, and organizations like the Lifeline make it um, so that it's more acceptable and it lets, lets people like her know that she's not alone, that there are others who are dealing with, with those thoughts and feelings as well. Um, and if I can help them to help more people keep their children alive, like, like my daughter is, then, then I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to donate as much as I can for that. That's amazing. That's, that's totally amazing. Um, we need more people to, to get involved in that, in that nature, you know, we just, it's, it's, it's great. Um, well, I guess I'll, I'll wrap up a little bit here. Um, where can we, uh, find you on the internet and, uh, is your book available still? It is. So you can find it at the chapter's website. So you can come into the store. They'll have uh, copies starting on Tuesday, I'm told. Um, and I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram and Twitter and whatnot. Go to my website, stinaholmes.com. Um, look for me on Facebook under Stina Holmes. And um, Instagram, I'm author Stina Holmes. And I love to connect with readers. I have a reader group that I love people to come in and, and we, we've created a family, a community um, of readers. And I love to read just as much as everyone else. So it's, um, it's, a, good, it's a good group to join. Awesome, great, great. Uh, Laura, and um, where can we find you uh, on the internet? So I have a website as well, like Stina. Mine is called authorlauralovett.com, and I'm also on 
Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as Laura Lovett. And I, I love connecting with readers. I love sharing stories of uh, ways that I've um, done these, these things I'm passionate about and how I think people need to find time for their passions because I think life is challenging and you need to build in time to do what you love. And if I can do it, so can you. So that's my messaging. I try to inspire people and, and talk openly about the journey of putting yourself out there like I have and working towards getting a Hollywood movie made out of my books. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, also, I mean, you gotta, gotta, you gotta eat, right? You, say. <laughs> you know, so, um, and there again, your book can be found on, in, on the chapters website or? on indigo yeah the website the amazon of course all all the platforms the the it's an ebook as well both books are are ebooks as well as uh, in the store chapters in red deer and okay. many other chapters awesome well I'll wrap up this is dave from red deer city tv in sunny red deer alberta with uh Sina holmes and laura Levin. take care thanks Thank you. market is going to take it to that level or higher in the very short term. Uh, is it sustainable? Uh, incredibly disappointed. Uh, we still feel betrayed 